Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Ross Rundown brought to you by First Health Orthopedics. I'm your host Matt Harrelson alongside with me a couple of familiar but new faces at the same time, <laughs> Jeremy McKenzie and Joey Bennett. Guys, really appreciate y'all joining us. Had a good week? Yes, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. All right, Joey, hope that uh, you're able to me, 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 me this week. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. A little hoarse, but uh, nonetheless, we appreciate both of you guys for joining us. So, uh, as we let off last week's show, we are now in full swing as far as uh, March and March Madness literally right around the corner. Regular season is now over with for college basketball. And, of course, the last game that two of the Tobacco Road teams played in, Duke versus Carolina. North Carolina able to get a second win over the Blue Devils, 79-70. to Jeremy, you're a Tar Heels fan. Uh, what were your takeaways from that big victory? Zion, Zion Wilson did play. <laughs> we took full advantage of it. We took care of business, and we got the victory. All right, Joe, I don't, do you, are you a Tar Heel fan as well? A little bit of college basketball, but not, not a specific team. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what. Um, living in the state of North Carolina, you know, most times you're either one shade of the blue or the <laughs> other. Uh, so just for the sake of the argument today, you're Carolina Blues. You so. you uh, but now that that game is over with, I do want to say, you're right, Zion wasn't there. Uh, same thing happened in the first game. That obviously uh, was a difference maker. Mm -hmm. However, North Carolina hitting on all cylinders right now. One of, if not the hottest team in the country. Number three, listen to this, number three overall in the, in the country. Uh, number two in uh, in the ACC tournament. So it goes to show you how good the ACC tournament is. And let's talk about that right now because uh, obviously regular season is over with. Mm -hmm. Virginia, number two in the country, going to be number one in the tournament. They finished 16 and two, tied with the Tar Heels, number one in the ACC. However, they had the tiebreaker. Now, Brandon and I talked last week, perhaps they may do that co- uh, championship thing. I don't really like that. You know, if you win, you win. I think the Cavaliers deserve the number one seed and the number and the uh, ACC championship by themselves. But uh, a couple stats I want to throw out here: uh, UNC was 14 and two at home, 11 and one away. Now, no matter what sport you follow, it's difficult to win on the road, right? Yes. Absolutely. So, uh, especially in the ACC where teams just beat up on one another, uh, I thought it was really surprising that they ended up only one loss. Eight and three against AP top 25 teams this year, the Tar Heels were. So, very impressive resume. Uh, Jeremy, let me ask you this, talking about uh, getting ready for March Madness. Last week, we talked how <clears throat> Duke was a one seed, believe it or not, uh, on the one line. Gonzaga, Kentucky, and Virginia. Now, do you think that should change? Should North Carolina jump up to a one seed now? I believe they need to be because of the um, – they clicking on cylinders right now. I mean, they're playing great ball. Consistency is the key. And I just – like right now, I think Chapel Hill got a better shot winning the ACC tournament. Yeah, and I mean, if you beat Duke twice, there's no reason why Duke should be ahead of us yeah, yeah. In, in the tournament. That's just – to me, that's just common sense. Yeah. Uh, especially when we're also ranked ahead of them overall in the country, Duke uh, three or uh, us three rather, Duke mm -hmm. four. Uh, but I, I listed out here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teams that I think will get in to March Madness from the ACC. Now that's a lot of teams for any conference to get in, mm -hmm. uh, even the ACC. But I've got. I'm gonna run through these real quick. Virginia, UNC, Duke, Florida State, and Virginia Tech. All five of those ranked in the top 16. They're all going to get in. Right after them is Louisville and Syracuse, who are both 10 and 8 in the conference, both 19 and 12 overall. I think they both get in. They played really tough schedules, had some of those that could have gone either way. Perhaps on the bubble is a, another Tobacco Road team, NC State, who's 9 and 9 overall, 21 and 10, or 9 and 9 in the ACC, rather, 21 and 10 overall. And then Clemson, 9 and 9, 19 and 12. You think both of those get in, or are they sitting out come March? I think they come sitting out on North Carolina State and um, Clemson. Yeah, and it, you know it all depends on what they call these quadrant one victories. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you guys, I don't fully understand it. You <laughs> know, I'm all about strength of schedule. Look at knows. it. Who have you won? Who have you lost to? Uh, however, you know, people say that uh, I always give Russell a hard time that there's a lot of bias for the SEC in football. I think the same could be said for the ACC in basketball. So I think there is a chance that we see nine teams get in. 
So, uh, talking about Duke, you mentioned Zion wasn't there. He hasn't played in four or five games now. Since the first since the first uh, game against Chapel Hill. Yeah, when he got hurt there in the very early going. Zion named, though, even with all that, named the ACC's Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. Do you agree with that? Um, I could say for Rookie of the Year, but Player of the Year, I think it could it could be a case for a whole lot of guys who have done put in the work and the time and the effort to do it, but they just looked at him because – He's Duke. He played for Duke. Yeah, and obviously he's been the big name all year long and has kind of had that almost LeBron James feel to him uh, and the circus that comes around that. And that's why it was made such a big deal about his shoe blowing out. Now we haven't seen him, even though it was a, quote, day-to-day injury. A lot of people have been speculating, will he even come back, you know, with millions of dollars perhaps on the line? Uh, It's kind of a philosophical question for you, Joey, but if you're in his position – do you come back? Do you risk that? Or do you say, I look at my teammates in the eye, I got to come back? What do you think? I, I think so. I definitely think so. You're, you know, you're, this is where you're proving yourself for the NBA. Um, you're proving yourself for the next level. And sitting out just because you're trying to get another million dollars or another couple million dollars, or, you know, it, I, I find it really tough for him to sit out. Yeah, well, it's a it's a tough decision, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. not for, an easy decision. Yeah, I think he's like what eighteen years old, maybe nineteen. That's a tough, tough decision. And as uh, Brandon and myself have talked about for the last couple of weeks, it's really going to come down to who's in his ear. Yeah, you know, if, who he's listening. If to. Coach K and his teammates are the louder uh, voices, I guess, then perhaps we continue to see him play basketball at the college level. If there's some. Um, you know, scouts or uh, agents, because we know they talk to him. Perhaps maybe he sits out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's been the big name all year long, so you can make a case that he should be top player in the ACC and Rookie of the Year. Kobe White, though, for the Tar Heels, Mm -hmm. I think he makes a case for Rookie of the Year as one of these super freshmen. I know at the beginning of the year all the talk was, would Nasir Little be that guy? But Kobe White's really stepped up and reminded folks of another Kobe uh, it takes a lot of shots, but makes a lot of shots. Yeah. Uh, but as you mentioned, there's other guys in the league that, that you know, there's Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy from mm-hmm. Virginia, uh, just to name a couple of them. Uh, you know, there's other guys. There's there's Cam uh, uh, R.J. Uh, Barrett and Cam Reddish from Duke that perhaps could be mm-hmm. players of the year. So a lot of a lot of uh, guys around the league. Of course, mm-hmm. the ACC very deep when it comes to yes. NBA talent. So. Uh, Speaking of uh, Duke, Duke's center, Marquise Bolden, is going to be missing the ACC tournament, which has already started. Of course, Duke and Carolina and Virginia and Florida State all got buys. But uh, do you think Bolden not playing is going to make any difference? I think it's going to hurt them all pretty much offensively and defensively, pretty much crashing down the boards, rebounding, whatnot have you. And and even if Zion not coming back to play, I think that's going to hurt Duke pretty much far as mentally and also consistency pretty much they got to find who's going to be that leader during the tournament and the rest of the um, madness. So I think somebody at Duke needs to step up and continue to do what they usually do. You know, I said that even when Zion got hurt, this is still a top-notch college basketball team. They still have three or four at least McDonald's All-Americans. So it surprised me that they came out of the gate and lost two of three after losing Zion. I understand he's a big presence. Um, Losing Bolden, if Zion comes back, I don't think this makes as big a difference. Now, I know he's your center. Zion's probably bigger than this guy. Um, But with that being said, I really don't know if it's going to make that much difference. But I would have thought that they wouldn't have skipped much of a beat with Zion being out. I don't know. I don't. I don't see Duke necessarily losing out in their first game, but uh, I think it's going to be that much tougher for them to win the ACC tournament. And then something that uh, happened just over the last couple of days that I brought to you guys' attention before we started taping in the uh, West Coast Conference. Obviously, a league that we don't talk about a whole lot, being on the other side of the country. But number one, Gonzaga lost to St. Mary's 60-47, to so lost by 13 points in the WCC tournament. Now, a lot of people right now not only had Gonzaga as a one seed in March Madness, but had them as the overall one seed. Mm. If you lose in your own tournament, should you be bumped off the one line? What do you guys think? Yes. Yeah? I, I'm a little indifferent about it. I, I can see, you know, you play that strength of schedule, strength of opponent, the issue, um, but that's a, that's a tough tough one to overlook. Mm. 
It is. Uh, St. Mary's not ranked this year. The Gales usually are a pretty good squad. They're usually the only team that if anybody gives the, the Bulldogs any trouble in the WCC, mm. it is St. Mary's. Uh, it's just tough to argue. This was Gonzaga's only third loss of the season. They only had two regular season losses. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the WCC is not the ACC or any of the other Power Five conferences, but you know, winning 30 games and only <laughs> losing two is still really good. Mm -hmm. I don't see them dropping off the one line. Perhaps, maybe, depending on what happens in the ACC, Virginia, maybe Carolina, mm -hmm. maybe Duke up. becomes the number one overall, or Kentucky. There's a lot of things still left to be said, uh, but I don't think Gonzaga's going to fall off the one line. All right, guys. Uh, of course, we're going to keep everybody abreast of what's happening throughout March Madness. Uh, Brandon and I were talking about starting a pool uh, for March Madness. So if you guys are interested, we'll start a, uh, a Ross uh, college basketball pool you guys can be a part of. We'll just yeah. play uh, just for bragging rights. Yeah, yeah so uh, pick the team going to think we'll win the whole thing. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Let's move to NFL. Now, the NFL free agency officially started on Wednesday, but that did not stop teams from starting over the weekend, yes. especially starting Monday. And there are a bunch of uh, guys that signed some trades. We're going to get to the trades here at the end of this segment. But I don't even know the best way to start. Let's, let's just hit them one by one. Let me know what you guys think. Let's start with the Raiders. They made a lot of moves, one of those being they signed safety LaMarcus Joyner to a four-year $42 million deal, and I want to precursor all this by saying we've seen a lot of money being thrown yes. around, a lot of guaranteed money. First of all, what's your opinion on that, just the fact that so much money is being thrown out there? Well, I made a case on yesterday. I put a post on Facebook where I felt like, to me, where you giving guys big-time contracts and they're not even worth the, worth the kind of money because just throwing out money where I feel like – a four-year, forty-two million dollar contract for a safety like a guy like in Lamarcus Joyner, like for, if I was a GM throwing money out like that, you gotta make a Pro Bowl or at least have that reputation of being the one of the top safeties in the league. But see, you've been unproven and you just been around a good defense on um, with the Rams last year. So now you pretty much chasing money come to the Oakland Raiders and John Gruden and that in the front office expect you to bring that same mentality to the uh, Raiders, but. At the same time, though, those guaranteed contracts where you may not prove that kind of money in that new team where you was when you were with your old team. Joey, let me ask you this. Uh, football is weird because it's perhaps the most violent sport out there except maybe hockey. Yeah. So I always find it odd that football players, are, they never get a full guaranteed contract. Yeah. So, you know, we're sitting here talking about how, man, I can't believe they're throwing this much money out there. But at the same time, people are arguing, well, football players need to get more money. Which side are you on? Um, I find it a little tough for the amount of money that professional athletes in general that's get. That's true. Um, you, can, you can have that discussion as well. But uh, that's that's really tough, like, uh, like Jeremy mentioned, without a Pro Bowl or without a, you know, get this many – you know, yeah. define the stat, you know, whatever it is. Um, that's that's really tough to say. All I can say is, you know, you you got to have some good insurance on those contracts so that the team gets that money back if this guy gets hurt, you know, in the first game and yeah. ends up sitting out the rest of the year. Yeah, and, you know, we watched the Raiders. Uh, they signed John Gruden to that, like, 10-year deal to be their head coach. Mm. They kept Derek Carr, but then they traded away Amari Cooper. They traded away Khalil Mack. They were terrible last year. Derek Carr had no protection. So, uh, of course, as we all know by now, Antonio Brown was traded to them. We'll get to that here in just a few minutes. But it seems like Oakland, who will be heading to Las Vegas next year with a brand-new stadium, let's not forget that, which means new stadium means more money. More revenue. Now it's time for them to start spending and try to rebuild their brand. But uh, Joyner, I don't know if I mentioned it, out of that $42 million, he's getting almost $17 million of it guaranteed. So, like you said, not a, he's a good safety, but not a lot of accolades that you want to see before you start handing out double-digit millions of dollars. <clears throat> Up next, your Carolina Panthers. Ryan Khalil retired this year, so they needed a replacement. They found him. I'll be honest with you. You may know this guy. I don't. Matt Paredes uh, signed with the center, signed with the Panthers. Three years, $27 million. Was this a good move? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was, was a bad move for um, for the Carolina Panthers. Um, I remember Matt, Matt Pariahs when they when Denver drafted him a few years ago. I mean, he's he's very serviceable, durable, but to me, he has not proven 
to be that anchor on that line to pretty much give us ability to get the protection that Cam Newton or whoever our quarterback going to be going to the season. But you can make a case this is kind of a move that I don't I disagree, <clears throat> but we could find a center in the draft with not having for this one. Uh, Joey, are you a Panthers fan? Yeah. Okay. So, Jeremy, you and I have talked until we were blue in the face about how Cam Newton needs to stay in the pocket more often and stop taking off and running because, Mm -hmm. yes, he is huge. He is huge, especially for a quarterback, so he has the ability to run more often than some of these other quarterbacks do. But eventually in the NFL, it catches up to you. Having Mm -hmm. offensive linemen that can protect you, especially Cam, is key moving forward, right? Absolutely. That that cost. Carolina their season they well they ended their season two years ago um, and I think that was a lot of the struggles this year was just defense Cam didn't have an opportunity to do what he needed to do um, and it ended up showing at the end of the game just it's, about it's, every time especially dealing with that shoulder injury in the process yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. gonna say he hurt his shoulder uh, and the Panthers went from six and two to like seven and nine seven and nine like that but so. he's already he's posting Instagram videos this week showing him back in the gym yeah so. he says he's gonna be back but again I think the the, the overall picture is we're starting to see some injuries yeah. perhaps pile up exactly. for Cam. They're going to need to he's, protect him. He's getting some age on him. Uh, yeah. He's, 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 not, a, and he's not a young guy anymore, yeah. as young as he was anymore. Uh, nobody can play football forever unless you're Tom Brady. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, that's the ageless true. wonder. The ageless wonder. wonder. All right, moving forward, guys. Uh, <clears throat> the New York Jets, another team that uh, perhaps – doesn't have a very good team. Needed to spend some money. They thought they had linebacker Anthony Barr. He ends up sticking with the Vikings. Five years, sixty-seven point five million, thirty-three million of which is guaranteed. Now that's big numbers. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, what's your thoughts? Uh, this is a good move for the uh, Vikings because take care of your franchise guy. All right. What do you think? You're you're gonna see the the money just keep going up. One person thinks they're worth it, and the next person thinks they're there's they're worth two million dollars more. Yeah, yeah. So. you know the Vikings gave Kirk Cousins a fully guaranteed contract last year to be their quarterback. I think it was like ninety eight million dollars. So whatever it was, it was huge. First person ever to get a fully guaranteed contract. Obviously, Minnesota, with a new stadium, has some money to spend. Uh, Minnesota, it seems like, was disappointed a little bit with Kirk Cousins' numbers. So maybe perhaps they said, all right, let's start on defense and work our way around. Maybe that's a good way to go. Uh, Back on offense, the Saints signed running back Latavius Murray to a four-year, $14.4 million contract. But perhaps I think... The, uh, the, the the story here is that this is the end of Mark Ingram's tour in, in uh, New Orleans. What do you think? I think, uh, well, for New Orleans, it was a bad move for Latavius Murray because I feel like you should have kept Mark Ingram to keep that one, that tenor with Kamari and Ingram. Um, but I think it's going to come bite him in the butt because Latavius Murray had that one good season in Oakland, rushed over almost 1,000 yards, and really had been productive ever since. But this is right. It really is like – New, New, New Orleans taking a pretty much a risk signing this guy, and really y'all don't know Mark Ingram signed with the Ravens today. So let me ask you this, Joey: um, the Saints are obviously all about Drew Brees. Yeah. The team revolves around him. Kamara, I would say a top five running back he at this is. point. Losing Ingram may hurt, but with Kamara, with Brees. Uh, with Michael Thomas on the outside or basically whoever's out there. Does this even really matter, you think? Well, nobody in that division has really made a move. You hadn't heard a lot from Tampa Bay. You hadn't heard a lot from Atlanta. You hadn't heard a lot from Carolina. So, you know, this unless something changes – one thing may be yeah. what kind of pushes yeah. them over the top. Now, they were mediocre at best last year, so you got to change a little something. But, you know, with, with nobody else in the division, you know, stepping up and saying, I'm going to make a run at it, it – might not be the worst move in the world. All right. Uh, moving forward. So, the Buffalo Bills have made some moves. Don't really talk about them very much. But they, they, signed, they signed a couple wide receivers. John Brown for three years, $27 million, And former Cowboy Cole Beasley, four years, $29 million, 14 of which is guaranteed. Now, you know, they've got a, uh, a young quarterback that they're trying to groom in Josh Allen. Are these some weapons that will be serviceable, or does this even matter? I think it's going to be a, these moves are serviceable, I mean, serviceable pretty much because you need some guys in the slot in order to pretty much spread the offense around, but at the same time, but you got to get a big target in the red zone. All right. 
and would not have, especially when you get that open up that running game and at least build your offensive line in Buffalo. John Brown could be the deep threat that Allen needs. What do you think? You agree? I, I can't believe – you talked the Buffalo Bills. I, I can't believe they were even in the conversation about yeah. Antonio John, Brown. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. 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 They, they almost, almost got Antonio Brown, though. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, last week uh, we talked about the Browns cutting their leading tackler, Jamie Collins Sr., uh, it was a money move, but then they turned around this week and signed defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson, three years, $39 million, uh, 21.5 guaranteed. So could this guy basically replace what they, what they lost in Collins? Sheldon Richardson is gonna, pretty much going to come in and be that veteran uh, locker room presence. I mean, he's going he's gonna to bring you that mentality Sunday, su- Sunday after Sunday, but – we're looking at a guy who really had been pre, to me had been pretty much dominant since he played for New York. All right, you concur? Can't can't argue with it. Yeah, I, can't I argue with it. you know when they cut Collins, I was like, this is typical Browns. I don't know if Richardson can replace. Him. Of course, they play two different positions. Collins a linebacker, Sheldon Richardson a defensive tackle. But like you mentioned, when he played with the Jets, he was a beast down low. Yeah, man. So, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, perhaps he could do the same thing in Cleveland. Now I mentioned the Jets; they missed out on Anthony Barr. However. They took away, I think, one of the best linebackers in the league, former Raven C.J. Mosley, who signed for five years, $85 million, $51 million guaranteed. What do you think? Good move. Yeah? Good move, especially with uh, Darren Lee and uh, Darren Lee and him, him, uh, him and Darren Lee in the middle. I mean, mm. this is going to be a defense going to be forced to be reckoned with. New York Jets, over the course of time, always been known for that defense. And, I mean – Always had a good linebacker course over the years, regardless of whoever it was. But I think it was a great move for the New York Jets um, organization. I mean, C.J. Musk will continue to put up numbers. They always did, even when he was in Baltimore. Mosley was seen by some as, like, the next Ray Lewis, as, yeah. as that the linebacker factory that uh, Baltimore's put out. Uh, five years, though, in it for the long haul with New York, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that guarantee. That was, yeah, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's kind of like, Like wow, I said, it's some big crazy. numbers. And like you said at the beginning, they're only going to continue to yeah. go up. Yeah. Uh, Devin Funches has left the building. No longer a Panther. He signed a one-year $10 million deal with the Colts. What do you think? Andrew I, Luck's new weapon? Uh Probably in the red zone, but um, for Funches, I think this is a um, prove it one year prove it deal. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna come in and play the number two receiver right beside uh, T. Y. Hilton. I mean, you gonna come? You gonna, ain't no way you out there with one of the best one of the one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now, and you can't put up numbers with luck. Yeah, you need to do something, do put up some numbers because you was a disappointment for us last year. That's what I was going to ask you, Joey. Being a, uh, a Panthers uh, fan, <clears throat> is this a good move by the Panthers to let him fly yeah, away? Get rid of him. After last year, it yeah, was. It, yeah. it, the, the history overall is a lot better, but you got to look at you know where he's at in his career. Well, let me ask he's you guys this. Look, there's, there's obviously some moves that could still be made. We still haven't gotten to the draft yet, but uh, what are the Panthers doing on the outside? <laughs> Well, we can. I can say this: we can make a case for the Carolina Panthers. We got so many holes to fill on, not only offensively and defensively, but I pretty much when it comes to said and done, especially coming around April, I, I always say the two biggest thing we need to redo is our offensive line, and we need a pass rusher. All right, with, with the with the um, free agency or with the trades and stuff going so quickly right now, it, it looks like everything's going to be kind of sped up, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and done. Well, so. if they're not careful, they may miss out, you yeah, know, and yeah. uh, and maybe have to draft someone in the uh, in in the draft. DK Metcalf, I'm sure, a name that's floating out there, one of those guys yeah. that just blew up the combine. So. He'll he'll be gone before we even get him. <laughs> maybe maybe we we'll have to wait and see. And speaking of Cam's injuries, one of the big storylines is you know, are you going to go out and get a, a veteran, you know, a marquee? backup quarterback you know are you going to get somebody good to to sit in that position with cam and known i know that'll raise a lot of questions if they do it but at the end of the day you got to think security of the team well you know uh we mentioned a couple weeks ago a name that was floated out was colin kaepernick of course at that point people didn't know if cam was going to be ready to go i don't know if colin would want to come back uh, and be a backup. Of course, you know, he settled that whole lawsuit dispute with the NFL. Uh, still be interested to see if he comes back in the NFL, yeah. even as we sit. But speaking of quarterbacks, we mentioned last week that the uh, Eagles were not going to keep and franchise Nick Foles. They did not. The Jaguars immediately came out and said, we're going to sign him next week. 
Well, now it's next week, and they did just <laughs> they that. They signed him to a four-year, $88 million deal, $50 million guaranteed. What do you think? Uh, what's the Jags ceiling this year with a new quarterback? Too much. Well, from, okay, this is my good thing and the bad thing. The bad thing about it is too much money. Too much money for a former Super Bowl MVP. Then the, the, the good part about it is I think now – uh, Jacksonville finally find their franchise quarterback. They could probably get them over the hump, especially when you got a lot of AFC powerhouses coming up now. So, but the only thing that's gonna hurt Nick Foles, you gotta put him, get some weapons around him. All right. So you just mentioned it's too much money for a, a Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the right number for a Super Bowl MVP? I mean, you gotta look at the you like Nick Foles. Nick Foles, all he's been, he's been a career backup guy. I mean, far as yeah, yeah, but I would go as far to say that between he and Carson Wentz, he's been the better of the two yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah, he's especially been the more playoffs. consistent. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously the Eagles said, "All right, we're going to take Wentz, and if that's the case, then stick with him." But yeah. uh, I would argue that Foles has been the better of the two quarterbacks. Yo, so, you could have at least had a, a QB competition in camp. A, yeah. a tough position for the Eagles to be in. I I hate to see them just cut ties with him completely, but. You're Thank right. you for the. He was going to ask you for a lot of. He was going to ask yeah. you for a lot of money. And uh, you know, I talked last week before the Redskins made, in my opinion, the stupid mistake of trading for Case Keenum. I was like, why don't you go after Nick Foles? They've obviously spent some money uh, that we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Why not go out and find? Because Alex Smith, even though he may uh, come back year after this one, he'll still be 37 years old. Like that's not the future. I, I agree completely. I got to get off my soapbox. <laughs> I agree completely that Nick Foles deserved a starting job somewhere. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not fair for him. As much as he's proven himself coming in completely cold the last two years and leading the Eagles to great yeah. things, um, it's tough to see him sit on the bench for just in case. And I'll tell you what, the Jaguars, they have a good defense. They also have a really good young stud at running back in Leonard Fournette. Now, as you mentioned, I agree, they need uh, so, some, some wide receivers yeah. to pair up. Um, but the AFC South, I think, is vastly improving because you look at the Jaguars, they now have a potential franchise quarterback. The Colts were better. They made the playoffs last year. The Texans have Deshaun Watson. They just franchised Jadavion Clowney and J.J. Watt and uh, DeAndre Hopkins and, you know, on and on and on. And Tennessee's going to upcome. And, and then the Titans right there as well. That's going to be a tough division. All right, guys, let's speed through these. I told you there's a bunch of them. Tyrone Matthew, the Honey Badger. He signed with the Chiefs for three what? years, forty-two million. Good I, move. I like this. I like this move because him and Eric Berry going to be one of the best safety teams in the NFL. You cannot. I dare somebody throw it to one of them. Chiefs already one of the best teams in the league. Let's make them better. Please, please give Patrick Mahomes some backup. He is too good to sit there with a mediocre team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, you're right. He can score at the best of them. They yeah. need their defense to be able exactly. to stop guys. Yeah. As well. yeah. Uh, here's a name that's been playing since the dawn of time, Frank Gore. He's uh, 35, 36, so he's my age. That's old for football, especially at the running back position, but he's still churning out <coughs> yards. He signed a one-year deal for $2 million with, guess who? The Bills. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a good move for a uh, good move on his behalf, but I think Ryan, his career, career right now, he's just putting up stats. You know, we'll see him in Kansas someday. I was, that was going to be my next question. Do you think Frank Gore is a Hall of Famer? Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. I would say that because because he only he needs right now two hundred and fifty two yards to pass it, uh, pass. Um, Pass Barry Sanders for the all, fourth time all time rushing list. Well, see, Barry did it in about half the time, but yeah, you know, <laughs> longevity sometimes is what you need. Uh, you know, with with Frank Gore, usually when a guy signs a one year deal like this, like you mentioned earlier, it's a prove it deal. But he's not getting any younger. I would have thought with him being in the position he's in, he doesn't own a Super Bowl. I thought maybe he would have signed with a team that had Super Bowl aspirations. I'm not so sure that's the Bills this year. Mm -mm. So uh, that could, one surprised me a little bit. He could have went to the Patriots and got one. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Go sit on their bench. Uh, speaking of my Redskins, they let one of their wide receivers take off in uh, former Dookie, Jamison Crowder. He signed with the Jets three years, $28.5 million, 17 of which – is guaranteed. So the Jets stockpiling players. What do you think? Good move? Good move for Jameson Crowder to go somewhere and prove himself to be that wide out. But I think for me it's too much money. What do you think? He's, he's not really a number one kind of guy. Yeah. It, a lot of money. 
It is a lot of money. Uh, though, the Redskins, they needed to spend some money somewhere, so they did it on former Giant safety Landon Collins, signed him to six years. Six years, 84 mil, 45 guaranteed. Now, I like Landon Collins. I'm going to start off by saying that. Uh, I was saying last week I had him on a fantasy team for two years in a row in a league where you're allowed to pick individual defensive players. The first year, the computer did it, and I think he led the league or was top two or three in tackles. I said, all right, I'm going to draft this guy again. He killed it for me again. So I think this is a good move. However, that's still a lot of money. What say you? <laughs> yeah, I'll say for Landon Collins, good move by the Redskins. I would love to see him and Ha Ha Clinton Dix yeah. form that safety town. I'm him and Josh Norman. I mean – this is going to be – Washington subject can build his defense and can pretty much can be a top, a top ten coming next season. Man, got a lot of weapons there. You, you mentioned three names that were perennially good with the teams they were with. So you put them all together and, and see if magic happens. Also, the Redskins making another move, another running back that seems like he's going to play forever. Adrian Peterson signed a two-year, $8 million deal to stay AP? with the Redskins. What do you think? Obviously a Hall of Famer. but He's a Hall of Famer, but AP, you know, you, you got to make a case for, for what he did last year. He pretty much sat at home, won't doing anything. Washington called him up, and I mean, like you said, Adrian's wonder. I mean, you can make a case. He should have been NFL comeback player of the year, rushed over 1,000 yards. Yeah, he killed it. Yeah. You, you mentioned Gore, you mentioned Peterson, you mentioned those guys like that. And that's something is something that's talked about a little bit more in baseball than it is in football. But that veteran presence, that veteran person in the locker room, that person that can go in and kind of show those rookies the way, yeah. invaluable even just for a one-year contract. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, if he can stay healthy, I think this is a good move. Two years, maybe one too long, but, you know, $4 million a year, that's not really a whole lot yeah. in today's standards. Yeah. yeah. All <laughs> it's right. a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, last one as far as signees, well, technically not the last one, but hang on. Ravens signed. You mentioned this one earlier. They signed Mark Ingram, three years, $15 million. They also signed Earl Thomas, four years, $55 million. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of these deals? The, both of these deals, I think these are good deals. I mean, because the Ravens had the number one defense last year, so you pretty much got rid of Eric Well, You traded Eric Well to get Earl Thomas. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a ball hawk in um, Earl Thomas. As far as Mark Ingram, you brought him in, um, you know, a guy who can pretty much have an opportunity to start again after, you know, losing his position to Kamara. But that's going to give Lamar Jackson a little weapon, not only for him to run, you know, for Mark Ingram to run it, but catch Pat's side in the backfield. Yeah. Ravens and Seahawks are two teams that I would, you know, have been perennially good, not yeah. maybe great, yeah. but those are two um, that the Seahawks was one that Jeremy and I were talking about earlier. You you just kind of expect them to be there, and they haven't been there the last couple of years, so it'll be interesting to see if that move for the Ravens helps. Usually, when you think Seahawks and you think Ravens, you think defense. Yeah. Uh, to me, even though Earl Thomas is getting up there, this seems like a perfect fit. If he wasn't going to stay in Seattle, go to Baltimore. As far as Mark Ingham's concerned, when they handed the keys over to Lamar Jackson, he's going to need weapons because he's a guy that's going to take off himself, even though, as I said, that's, you shouldn't do that. But I think that's a good pickup for them. Now, one more here that made a signing. Of course, this is a big deal. Le'Veon Bell. The saga is over. He signed... <laughs> With the Jets. Now, it was a little uh, melodramatic because we thought he would sign with the Jets, and he did. Four years, $52.5 million, 35 guaranteed. None of these numbers should surprise people anymore. The deal could reach $61 million, though, altogether. So him signing with the Jets after leaving the Steelers, what do you think? I, I'm like, I'm put it like this way. Thank God the saga is over. <laughs> it, it was God. getting long in the tooth. Though, I right? mean, for Pittsburgh, I know you're glad to let your franchise running back go somewhere else. Yeah. But now he's a New York Jet. I mean, he's going to be in the spotlight in the Big Apple. I mean, I believe he'll put up the numbers, what he needs to do. But as far as for New York, you better get an office in line first. All right. You concur? Yeah. Damn. See, here's my problem. Bell is actually going to make less money than if he would have just taken the franchise tag last year or if he would have taken the original deal the Steelers were going to give him. So, you know, he sat it out to try to prove a point. He found a loophole that allowed him to still get a paycheck each week. But in the long run, he's actually going to make less money and be on a worse team. I do not like this move by him. <laughs> uh, all right, a couple of big trades that also happened this week. We kind of touched on the first one earlier in the show. The Steelers traded Antonio Brown to the Raiders for a 2019 third and fifth round pick. What are your first reactions? 
I'm still trying to figure out the picks. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the pick. Third and f- okay, for a guy of a caliber of Tony Brown, yeah. I mean, for the past three seasons, this guy has averaged over 1,500 yards, receiving yards per season, and leads probably about 10 to 12 touchdowns. I feel like Pittsburgh got cheated out of this deal because for a guy for Tony Brown, if I was a GM, in order to get uh, Tony Brown, you're going to give me one or not one – but two first round picks and another player in return or cash. But third for third and fifth round, no, I don't like that. I think I feel like Steelers got cheated. It was a big it was a big huge win for the Raiders. I think he made himself a liability. Yes. Um honestly. I, I think he just there was way too much attention paid over the whole saga. I mean, it updates every day coming through um, coming through the news outlets about this has happened today. They've talked today. He didn't show up today. He did you know he just made himself a liability. and I think that cost it ultimately cost the Steelers probably end up costing him some money down the road. I, if I was a team owner, I don't want that drama. I don't want yeah. that attention. Um, I'd love to have the person – I mean, he's got to – now, he may go and have a great season and every, all things may be forgiven, um, but, I, I mean, you've got to consider that as a team owner. You've got to consider that as a as a front office. Yeah, I look at it as um, – I don't know what was in the water in Pittsburgh, but Le'Veon and Antonio Brown yeah. kind of have that prima donna feel like yeah. I'm bigger than the team. Yeah. Guys remember that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and as you – I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It became a liability. Great move for the Raiders. They gave up practically nothing, got one of the best wide receivers in the league. I don't know that I would go as far to say the Steelers got cheated, however, because they didn't have to pull the trigger on this. They didn't have to trade them. Now, they chose to, and originally they asked for at least one first-rounder. They didn't get that, obviously. I feel like maybe if they'd have held out, they probably could have got a better deal somewhere else. I don't know what uh, what persuaded them to take the Oakland deal, but uh, Antonio Brown going to be in Las Vegas next year. Well, I think that's going to be a big ticket sale for the Raiders. Yeah, because that's only, not only is going for Antonio Brown to come to Oakland, that's going to pretty much your attendance going to increase. Yeah, exactly. Because that's a household name, and then number two is you pretty much that's giving Dave, uh, Derek Carr. I'm about to say his brother's name, uh, Derek Carr, a big a big time. Deep threat. <laughs> yeah, and I think we'll see his numbers improve this year as well. Yeah. All right, last one, guys, because we've been talking about NFL for like 30 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, another big wide receiver on the move. This one surprised me a little bit. The fact that he I got traded him. and the team he went to, but the Giants traded Odell Beckham Jr. to the Cleveland Browns for what they should have gotten for, for Antonio Brown. A first-round pick, a third-round pick, and safety Jabril Peppers. What do you think? Well, this is a move where it's very shock. I mean, shocking. I mean, very shocking. Um, I think the New York Giants, like I said, they lost out on this deal. But I hope that the Giants do go out there and get somewhere DK uh, DK Metcalf in this draft for give Eli a go-to guy. Well, I made, made a joke with Joey earlier. I said um, about – Odell Beckham in the Cleveland Brown uniform. At least his hair would match it. Had to match his uniform. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I mean, for this, for the Cleveland Browns, I mean, you got Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt, Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry. Um, pretty much, they pretty much now they got one of the top offenses in the NFL. I mean, especially Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham reuniting again since during LSU days, but. I can see Baker Mayfield put up with some big numbers this year. All right, what do you think, not, Joey? Not that it's an oddity in sports, but I think you hit the nail on the head uh, talking about Antonio Brown. I think Odell is another guy who thinks he's bigger than the team yes. sometimes. He thinks he can go out and do whatever he wants to do. I, I love, as I was talking with Jeremy earlier, I love to see him on the Browns because I think it'll do great thing, things for the Browns. But um, how, how much longer is – how much longer has Eli got on his contract? You have to wonder if he's going to end up being cut um, very much longer. The, the Jets have just kind of treaded water the last couple of years after being in the Super Bowl a few years back. Um, but you you got to wonder when it's just kind of time to move on. I think it probably would have been a waste in, um, in New York, unfortunately, for the Giants. Uh, I think this is a good move for both teams. I think that the Giants got a lot more back for OBJ than the than the Steelers did for Brown. You get a first round pick, a third round pick, and a starting safety to replace Landon Collins. Mm-hmm. Now the Giants currently have the sixth overall pick. Perhaps they take a quarterback there to replace yeah. Eli in the future. Yeah. That pick that they just got back from the Browns, I believe, is seventeenth. So you now have two picks in the top seventeen. 
Uh, and then, of course, as you mentioned, the Browns now have a one of the top at least ten wide receivers in the league. Now they may have to curtail that yeah. prima donna persona that he has. But you listed all the weapons now. When this broke, I went into Russell's office and I said, remember last year when you picked the Browns to jokingly win the Super Bowl? <laughs> you might have a legit yeah. shot at that. It might now. have just been a year too early. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real quick, a meme that I saw when this broke. Baker Mayfield, Kareem Hunt, and Odell Beckham Jr. The Browns offense will have more drama and storylines than a full season of Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> that's and a good Lord, one. if that ain't the truth, right? Uh, all right, guys. That's going to do it for that. Of course, the uh, NFL draft coming up in April. We'll keep you up to date on that. And I think we're going to do a uh, mock our mock draft brother. like we did last year as I, well. I think I'm hearing they, they just canceled the draft. There's been so many other, you know, yeah. everybody's going everywhere so it's just, let's just play with this. You know what? I'm almost be good with that. The way guys are moving around so much. Yeah. You've got whole new teams everywhere anyway. So. Yeah. All right, Joey, let's talk some baseball. So we started a segment last week called Rounding the Bases. We began with the NL West. This week we're going to head, uh, stay on the West Coast but head over to the uh, Junior circuit. So let's begin with the Los Angeles Angels. So are the Angels running out of time with Mike Trout's good years and should they go ahead and trade him while you can get something for him? I, I will say no for this reason. Um, that is a fan base that deserves Something good. Um, um, him and the, the guy that pitches in uh, pitches Shohei Otani. Yeah. Um, I, you just have to kind of say, you know, you feel good for the fan base. Um, say they got something mm -hmm. to cheer for there. There's not going to be a whole lot, a whole lot to cheer for if they move Trout. Um, from a baseball, pers I mean, that's from a fan's perspective. Right. From a you know front office perspective, yeah, they probably need to trade him and go ahead and get something out of him. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot happening in, in Anaheim, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're right. And pitching seems to be the biggest problem. Of course, they also gave Pujols that ridiculously stupid yeah. deal that pays him until he's like 45 yeah. years old. Yeah. And uh, again, for the fans. Yeah. Trout's contract runs out after the 2020 season. I seriously doubt that he stays with the Angels. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point – he the further he gets to the end of this contract, the lesser he's going to be worth yeah. on the trade market. Yeah. I say, as tough as it would be to sell to your fans, you're not really – like you said, you're kind of treading water. Yeah. I think now is the time to trade him because you're still going to get a boatload of prospects, maybe even some starting guys yeah. back before he leaves and you have nothing to show for it. I, I think you may – uh, it may be a late season move it's, either next year. It's or definitely the a tough year. decision that would oh, yeah. have to be made. Yeah. All right, let's move up to Seattle. So Robinson Cano is gone. King Felix seems like he's done, and uh, Kyle Seeger, one of their dynamic infielder, is out. He's having surgery and he's out for April, uh, or at least till April uh, through April rather. Is it time to start over in Seattle? I, I think you have to. You you like you said your your weapons are kind of running out. Name other than those four, name a person who plays in Seattle right now. Um, and you'd be hard pressed yeah. to find somebody else out of a Seattle fan that could tell you somebody. Yeah, uh, and their GM, Jerry DePoto, for some reason, he enjoys shaking things up. Sometimes I think just to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like he'll, he'll, have, mood. he'll have 10 guys, and the next year he'll have 10 different guys that all do the yeah. same thing. They didn't get any worse, didn't get any better. Uh, I think that Seattle needs to take a look. And uh, maybe Cano was the beginning of that once King Felix. He's getting paid like 20-something million dollars this year, and he's yeah. not good at all anymore. Yeah. It's time to start over. Yeah. Uh, let's head down to Texas. They're not expected to contend this year, but what do you expect to see from the Rangers this year? I don't know. It's a tough team to kind of project. Um, you've, got, you've got some good stuff there, but nobody that just excites you and just stands up and says, oh, yeah, let's, you know, the, the Rangers are going to make a run at it. Adrian Beltre retired. I think that's going to hurt him. Joey Gallo, who is uh, smashes the ball, but he also strikes out 250 times. Yeah. He was on the trade block. Actually, the Atlanta Braves were looking at him for yeah. a little bit to play third base. Luckily, yeah. we signed Josh uh, Donaldson instead. But I, I think um, the Braves were the only team that Adrian Beltre didn't play for. Yeah. Um, he played and for I everybody. Wished he had. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like Adrian yeah. Beltre. Uh, also played for Seattle out there in the West mm -hmm. as well. Uh, the I was looking at the Rangers starting pitching staff. It's just like a hodgepodge of guys. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, kind of guys that are on. Shelby Miller was one of them. Yeah. You know, that, the, yeah. the Braves Braves. basically just yeah. tossed aside. Uh, anyway, I don't expect much from them. Let's talk about the Oakland A's. Of course, our good friend Scott Emerson, their pitching coach. So I wanted to specifically talk about him tonight. We saw last year, talking about a hodgepodge of starting pitchers, yeah. he took a bunch of basically no-name guys yeah. and made a great staff out of them. Can he put together another reclamation pitching staff? It looks like it's a good opportunity for him. Now there are some, some good guys that now have a good year under their, under, uh, under their wing, and we'll see what kind of springboard that is for next year. Yeah, this year, the A's will be able to score runs. Chris Davis has led the league in home runs over the last three years, believe it or not. Nobody talks about that. Matt Chapman uh, at third, Matt Olson at first. They're both two big boppers, almost like the Bash Brother day. So they're going to score runs. It's a matter of can they pick some guys off of the uh, scrap heap and uh, and form a rotation and bullpen <clears throat> with them. I think Scott's the man for the job. Of course, I'm a little biased, yeah. but we saw him do this exact same thing <clears throat> last year. The A's won like 94 games. Nobody yeah. thought that. They yeah. made the playoffs, even though they lost in the uh, wild card to a stacked Yankees team. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of teams would have lost that game. But, uh, you know, I'm even going to go as far to say that if Scott is able to come anywhere close to what he did last year, yeah. it's time for some teams to start looking at him for the yeah. head gig, right? Yeah, very possibly. Very, yeah. very possibly. Or even just a bigger market team, I think, maybe yeah. an opportunity for him. I, and I, I know his family probably would love to have him anywhere but Oakland so we can get a little yeah. bit closer to home. Yeah. <laughs> can and you with, be any f- other than Seattle? Can and, you be any further away? And with that being said, um, Baltimore's – starting a uh, head coaching job was open for a long time mm-hmm. and I kept saying all right they got rid of Buck it's yeah. a it's a young team that's going to need a pitching go get type him go, get, go him get him he's got family in Baltimore <laughs> he's he'll be as close as yeah. he could possibly be except for maybe Atlanta yeah. Yeah. but it didn't work out but uh, nothing but the best of course for Scott <laughs> and then finally the Houston Astros looking at the rest of the of the west are they going to run away with this I, thing I, I think you've answered your question unless the A's um, you know, unless the A's can kind of turn the knob a little bit and get, I, I think you got a two two team race. Yeah. Um, Rangers not there, Seattle not there, um, uh, Angels Angels not there. Um, so you got the you got the A's and the and the Strohs. Yeah, uh, I, I I hope the A's do well this year, but I think the Astros are going to have this thing wrapped up by the All Star yeah. break. It, it'll be interesting to see. They've still got a lot of good pieces there. Yeah. They've been able to keep um, what they win the. Uh, series two years ago now? Two years, yeah. Um, so, uh, 2017. They've, they've been able to keep a lot of those good pieces. Um, yeah. I would put Jose Altuve on my team any day of the week. Yeah, you've got Altuve. You've got uh, Alex Bregman, their third yeah. baseman, who's going to be an absolute superstar. Yeah. Uh, you've still got uh, Charlie George, Morton, Charlie still Morton, George Springer. Springer. You've got Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander. However, both of them will be free agents after this year. Yeah. I think that may potentially be their problem in the long run is being able to afford everybody. Afford. But as of right now, the only guy they lost was their super utility guy, Marwin Gonzalez, and they've got plenty of pieces to, to fix that. Well, it's good to know that they'll at least be there late in the season so they won't be trading those guys away yeah. come July 31st. Yep. Um, you would think that they would be able to maintain and be able to keep those guys at least till the end of the season and then see what they can do as far as next year is concerned. All right. That's going to do it for rounding the bases. Of course, this time next week, uh, more than welcome to join us again, Joey, because we always love take, talking baseball. But uh, next week, we're going to head back to the NL and take a look at the Central, which is expected to be stacked this year. So let's move forward and talk about our big impacts of the week. Of course, brought to you by Richmond Community College, whose motto is local college, big impact. You know a little bit about that, Joey. Who's your big impact this week? Um, I have to go with a local boy for uh, for this week's big impact. Uh, Jake Ransom, two grand slams um, already this season. Yes. I'm really excited for him. Um, As his mom tweeted out, um, are you sure you want to play football? Um, (laughs) So uh, I don't know. Maybe we got a, a two-sport athlete down there, but um, love the Ransoms. Um, good family friends of mine. Absolutely. Um, but really, really happy for Jake. Um, the big signing this year with Charlotte uh, for football, but having a great season for uh, for baseball. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens from here. I bet you if he wanted to walk on with the 49ers on the I, diamond, they'd I take him. I don't think that they would turn him away. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been following Jake's career since he was at Rockingham, yeah. uh, working in the media. Always been a big kid. Yeah. Um, has never really hit a ton of home runs, so I'm kind of excited to see what all he can do this year as a senior. He's, he um, he has no reason not to hit the ball. Exactly. Way. Let yeah. me put it that way. Exactly. All right, Jeremy, who's your big impact this week? Well, um, <coughs> me as y'all know, uh, I'm a Panther fan. Um, 
Thomas Davis, we had to say goodbye to him in the offseason, but nonetheless, he has found a new home. All right. He signed a two-year, $10.5 million contract with the L.A. Chargers. All right, so he's going to be joining a – uh, hometown boy in Melvin Ingram, mm. so they'll be linebacking together. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's anything left in the tank for for Davis? I believe it, I believe it is. I think he's going to play at a high level, and I think that's going to give Carolina like a regret. Like, dang, we should never got rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick before we move on, Thomas Davis, Hall of Famer. Yes. What do you think, Joey? Um, I'd probably say so. Yeah, I'd have to say so. because for because mm-hmm. we all look at a case. He is the first player in any professional sport. To come back, not only one, but two, but three torn ACL, MCL surgeries. That's and, tough. And and play at a high level. That's no tough man has not done that. Yeah. All right, my big impact for this week, also on the local level, I'm going to head to the uh, the Lady Raiders, who uh, had a 12 to one Mercy Rule win mm-hmm. over Pinecrest. Of course, one of our uh, big conference foes had four home runs in this game off of their sophomore pitcher Gracie Huff. Let me see if I can find all these. Uh, senior Taylor Parrish hit her team leading second and third home runs of the season. Fellow senior Savannah Lampley connected on her second home run of the season to center field. And sophomore Peyton Chapel knocked a three-run blast also to straightaway center. So, talking about home runs, the girls yeah. said anything you can do, <laughs> I can, can do, do better. better. So. All right, that's going to do it for our Big Impacts of the Week. As I mentioned, brought to you by Richmond Community College, whose motto is local college, big impact. All right, guys, let's finish up with love it or hate it. Real quick, love it or hate it. Russell Westbrook threatened a courtside fan and the fan's wife. Love it or hate it? Hate it. All right. They are people just like we are, but I have absolutely no respect for that. You know, I initially said that I hated that Westbrook did this, although then I read up about this guy that he was yelling at. I also heard what he actually said to him. I want to start a really quick, short discussion here. The, first of all, the Jazz fan was banned for life. Westbrook was fined 25 k which he probably had in the shoe. Yeah. Um, what is the limit when it comes to trash talk for fans? He gets paid a lot of money to do what he does. Yeah. He gets to go out and play a kid's yeah. game. Um, you have to take a lot. You have to let a lot roll off of you. Um, those of us that work in the public know we have to take a lot, have to let a lot roll off of us. Mm. He's getting paid more money than I'll ever see in my life. I can go in the locker room and wipe my wipe my eyes with with dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, obviously, we don't want to see another Ron Artest yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, well, Ben Wallace won. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, there's some things that you just shouldn't say to players, and yeah. I, they're humans yeah. too. At the end exactly. of the day, you know, uh, I, I agree. It's it's a, it's a fine line, though. Yeah. I think between. Uh, heckling a guy, booing him, and then actually like calling him derogatory comments yeah. that can uh, take him from mm-hmm. you know here to here. Yeah. What worries me, you you realize if you when the fans figure out that's what pushes a guy's buttons, then they keep. Guess doing what? It. They're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, they're going to try and get him to swing at him or something like that yeah. because they know that that would be you know a that would set food. them for life. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. That's a. That's a tough cookie. Again, I'm glad I'm not in that position. Me but, too. Uh, I'll, I'll take my hundred dollar bills and yeah. wipe my tears when I go to the locker room. Especially, I'm glad you like that. Especially, one. <laughs> especially on the road, and especially a caliber player like Westbrook. Because as you mentioned, let's say yeah. he does swing at a guy, he's out for the rest yeah, of the season. Exactly. Oh, yeah. that's, Paul exactly. George is good, but that's perhaps your season. Yeah. Right there. So, yeah. all right, moving forward, talking about some guys that signed. I left one out here. The Oakland Raiders also signed offensive tackle Trent Brown to a four year six. $66 million deal, guaranteed $36.75. Now, here's the thing I want to get your love it or hate it. I've never heard of Trent Brown. This makes him the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history. Love it or hate it. It's kind of like a two-part love or hate it. The reason why I love it because, for one, he getting paid. Yeah. And number two, the reason why I hate it because he's with the wrong team because you, <laughs> you, leave, a, you leave a Super Bowl team and go to the Raiders. Yeah. All right. Love it or hate it, Joe. Yeah, it's it's, I'm like you. I have no idea who Trent Brown is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, O-line, not, not bad. Not bad. You know, I'd like to think that I'm – Pretty up to date on sports. Uh, unfortunately, who did he play for before he signed with them? New England. Oh, <laughs> he right, got a well, ring. He go. got a ring with so him. So he got a ring, and now he's getting paid. So good for you, Trent. <laughs> Moving forward, UFC star Conor McGregor back in the news, arrested again. This time in Miami Beach for smashing a person's phone. Love it or hate it. <laughs> 
Um. <laughs> you, you, you expect him to have all that aggression in the ring, and then yeah. you want him to sit out all the He's going to smash the person's, smash the person's phone, really. Yeah. <laughs> this is something stupid for him to do. I hate it because I feel like Conor McGregor is venturing way off into WWE land here. <laughs> To the point where we may see him in WWE. I think yeah. he's, he's flirted with it already. Uh, he was charged with strong-armed robbery and criminal mischief. Now, I remember last time he, he like threw that barricade through a bus yeah. and got away with it. Yeah. you expect the same thing to happen here? I, you've got to punch Slap him. on the wrist. You, you've yeah, got pretty to punch much. him a little bit. He's, somebody's, you got to make an example for him. Yeah, at least give him a fine or something. All right. Uh, Wisconsin quarterback Alex Hornerbrook is transferring to Florida State. And we talked a couple months ago about all these guys in the transfer portal moving around. But uh, Wisconsin's uh, four-year starter has another year of eligibility heading to the Seminoles. Love it or hate it. Start with you, Joey. Um, I, I love it. I think it's a good opportunity for him. I, I do hate to see these guys. It's probably one of my biggest beefs about college sports is you get people that are – not necessarily looking at their college career, but they're trying to predict what's going to happen from there. Uh, that's a, a tough cookie for me. All right. Love it or hate it, Jeremy? Love it. You know, I'm going to take everything you said, uh, Joey, except college football is a business. Oh, yeah. The yeah, NCAA absolutely. doesn't necessarily always want to admit it, but the players are starting to realize it. That's why we see so many guys transferring. If I'm not going to play this year, I'm moving, I'm moving on. on. Yeah. I really have no problem with that personally. So uh, I think Hornerbrook – at FSU will make the Seminoles a lot better than they have been over the last two years, which is mm. not good. He's he's playing the game that is put before him the exactly. right way. I don't like the game. Yeah. But it's it's the game he's got to play. All right, let's go back to baseball. Now, I mentioned King Felix not doing so hot these days. He's actually upset that he won't be starting opening day. Love it or hate it. Do I need to pull out the joke again? Mm. <laughs> no, um, I – I don't think necessarily it's automatic that you deserve it, no yeah. matter how good you are. Um, the manager's got to make a decision. I, I'd say I love it. Um, I right. hate it for him personally, but I love it for the team. What do you think, Jeremy? Love it. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, I'm. I don't really care that he's upset. His ERA this spring <laughs> is close to 16. So bye bye. You know, it's like uh, you're not that good anymore. You're not going to be the number one starter. It's easy as that. Moving on, Clay Thompson came out and said this week that they need more energy from the Golden State fans. Jeremy, love it or hate it? Love it because hey, they're your fans. You need to, they need to have the, um, the they need the energy, they need the charisma, they need enthusiasm for their team because y'all the defending uh, NBA champions. <laughs> love it, love it. You you got to call the fans out sometimes yeah. and say, hey guys, we're putting it all on the line. Y'all bring it back for us. I'm gonna say love it in the in the form of I feel like Warrior fans are becoming a little lethargic yeah. here. Yeah. You know, they've won so much, maybe they expect it. Yeah, it's, and Clay's like, yeah. look, this is not a given, even yeah. though we've got five Hall of Famers on yeah. our starting five. Yeah. Uh, another one signing here, uh, wide receiver Danny Amendola signed a quick one-year deal with the Detroit Lions. Love it or hate it? Love it. Approve it. One approve it deal. Right. I, I hate it because I'd love to see him. The Patriots are on national TV all the time, and uh, he's one of my favorite players. He's really good, especially in the slot. I love it, though. This is going to reunite him with uh, general manager Bob Quinn and head coach Matt Patricia from the Patriots, so perhaps he'll be able to do well there. Joey, this one's for you. Love it or hate it, the Diamondbacks signed outfielder Adam Jones to a one-year deal. One-year deal? That's all you would give him was yeah. a one-year? <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Come on. He deserves more than that. He does. You know, I love Adam Jones. I think he is a stand-up teammate, uh, a guy that's you know never gets in trouble. Yeah. Uh, for a long time there, was putting up almost MVP numbers. I kind of wish the Braves had taken a yeah. look at him. Yeah. However, did not yeah. do that. So He's they, not chipper. They got they got robbed. Uh, or he got robbed, rather, just signed into a one-year deal. Yeah. But uh, the only thing I can think is he goes out and proves himself and gets a huge deal after this. Maybe so. so. With the Diamondbacks or with somebody else. Absolutely. Uh, another football one here, not talking about uh, signing, but yet restructuring. The Dallas Cowboys restructured long, linebacker Sean Lee's deal uh, he, there, he was supposed to be making $7 million this year, and he's now going to make three point five. So taking one for the team. Love it or hate it, Jeremy? Love it. And you're a leader. Do what you got to do for the team. Absolutely. I, I love to see that stepping up. And I, I am not the team. I, I want what's best for the team. We've seen several baseball players do it, and I love it. Yeah, and a lot of times, though, we don't see players do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm with you. Sean Lee, class act. I hate the Cowboys, but he's a good player. Uh, moving forward, the New York Mets have reassigned Tim Tebow back to minor league camp. Love it or hate it? Love it. 
I, I hate it. I would love to see him get a good shot at, at the majors. I would, too, if he's good enough. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't know that he's yeah. good enough. Although, with that being said, I'd be okay if he made the Major League team if it makes the Mets worse. Yeah. Hey, well, there you go. There you go. Uh, also talking about the Mets, I'm very excited about for this as a baseball fan. Max Scherzer is going to start the Nationals opener, and he's going to be facing Mets. Jacob deGrom. Love it or even, hate it. Even as a Braves fan, I love this. Gotta love I love it, right? this. This is, this is baseball at its best right here. Absolutely. Don't talk to me about Bryce Harper. Talk to me about a good pitching duel. Now, it may be a blowout one way or the other, but two of the best players players that probably should have been on the same team, honestly. Um, but two of the best pitchers, rather, um, starting against one another opening day. This is what opening day is all about. I absolutely love it. Uh, love it, love it, love it. And you're talking about two guys that were in the top three for Cy Young last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, what gets better than that? Yeah. Uh, up next, Urban Meyer is set to join Fox's studio college football team after leaving Ohio State. Jeremy, love it or hate it? Love it. Didn't he make enough money? I don't know. <laughs> just, Maybe go, just go sit at home. He just needs uh, something to do, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I think it'll be a, a good addition to the broadcast. Um, I think he's got a huge wealth of knowledge. Yes. I'm really surprised he didn't, you know, he's not consulting somewhere or doing something like that. Um, but I'd love to see him in the public eye. There are people that worship that man. So uh, Fox was very smart to bring him on. He very well could be consulting as well, just yeah. on the side. Yeah. Uh, I saw him do some work in the uh, during some college game days with ESPN. As you mentioned, very knowledgeable, uh, good on camera. You yeah. have to have, you know, yeah. a certain persona for camera. I think yeah. he'll do well there. Speaking of college football, Texas fired ex-superstar, really, Vince Young after a DWI arrest. Now, he had a part-time role as a development officer that paid him fifty grand a year, and he threw it all away. Love it or hate it? Uh, love it that they did it, that they made an yeah. example out of him. You, you cannot... At any level, I don't think you can get sit by and let things like that happen. But especially when you're trying to teach 19, 19, 18 through 21 year olds how to conduct yourself, yep. um, you he needs to move on, get a fresh start with somebody else. It's not that somebody else won't pick him up, but um, you know you've got to make an example. You got to show those kids, hey, this is not how you operate. All right. I don't want to say love it for the simple fact reason. It's accountability. You know, like Joy said, you got to be accountable for yourself and to you. To the job you hold, and then plus you got, and then you're a leader and an example to, the, and a mentor to these young people. So you gotta show some kind of class. He may catch on somewhere else. I don't know that uh, there's anybody <clears throat> bigger in Texas football lore though than Vince Young. Yeah. They basically gave him several chances. This is a do nothing job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. let's face it. You make yeah, fifty grand time. in a part time job. And he threw all that away. Let me do that. With, <laughs> yeah. with, with the DWI risk. Here's why I hate it. This quite frankly, just pisses me off. He didn't notify the school of his arrest until after it came out in the media, and even then, he did it through text. I hate that. Like, right there, I'm done yeah. with you. Bye-bye. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. I think we're down to our very last one. We're going to finish with baseball. Sorry, man. <laughs> ESPN. Finally, we can talk baseball. <laughs> ESPN's Major League Baseball ranks for 2019. I'm going to give you the top five. Tell me if okay. you agree. You should know some of these names. Yeah. Mike Trout, number one. Yeah. Mookie Betts, number mm-hmm. two. Max Scherzer, number three. Jacob deGrom, number four. And Nolan Arenado, number five. Love that or hate it? I love it. Love, love it. it. Sounds about right to me. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited to see Scherzer versus DeGrom, at least by this list, number three versus number four. A couple of notables here real quick before we go. Bryce Harper, number 15. Wow. That's kind of yeah. uh, kind of up there, yeah. although I'm not a big fan of Bryce. Yeah. I think that sounds about right. Others that for would the, say that's too high. For the season he had, I think that's probably a little too high, but he's got a good – he's got a first start in Philadelphia. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, well, he better for $330 million. Amen. Freddie Freeman. The top brave coming in at number 18. Does that sound about right? Um, in the grand scheme of things, probably so. All right. Uh, I think Freddie could uh, win a batting title soon. Very easily. Uh, yeah, and then finally, Machado. Manny Machado signed that new deal with the Padres right behind him at number 19. That sound about right? I think that's a little low. Yeah. Um, Machado thinks a whole lot of himself. He does. So, uh, he's good, though. He, he's good. He can back it up in a lot of ways. But um, it'll be interesting to see what he can kind of prove him. I, I would say maybe a touch higher if I was ranking. All right. 
That's going to do it for this edition of the Ross Rundown. This was the extended version, but three on the desk, that's what you get. All the analysts and uh, all the analysis that you expect here from the RO Sports Show. So, Joey, we really appreciate you joining us. Jeremy, joining us as well. I'm Matt Harrelson. We'll see you right back here for another edition of the Ross Rundown brought to you by First Health Orthopedics. Have a great week.